Yo, 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 guys, what's going on? I'm the Grinch, and today we're gonna do a rear wheel drive swap on Sam Cracks Audi R8. Uh, no, we're not. That's not happening. We gotta get this truck sorted because I'm taking it on a road trip in the next few days. But the Ridgeline isn't a real truck, it's just an Accord with a bat! I get it, you don't like it, you and everyone else. Let's just knock out a few things on the Honda here and then you can go back to eating those bananas. I always catch me up to no good! I've got Simply Safe cameras set up everywhere the barn, the house, the garage. It's definitely my favorite part of Simply Safe's home security system. These cameras can be placed anywhere you have a Wi Fi signal and they have this awesome two way walkie talkie function. Ah, simply safe. Besides the cameras, a simply safe home security system comes with everything you need to keep your home safe and secure. And it's very easy to install. Whether it's a smoke detector, entry or motion sensor or panic button, every piece of simply safe hardware comes with double-sided sticky tape for you to peel off and place wirelessly in your house wherever you want. Besides providing a high-tech security experience, simply safe puts the power in your hands to choose the equipment appropriate for your living quarters. No longer are you forced to buy or rent unnecessary expensive equipment, and there's no such thing as a contract with Simply Safe. Home monitoring starts at only 50 cents a day, and in the case of an emergency, Simply Safe will notify the appropriate authorities to respond. Now, I want to give a big thanks to Simply Safe for being a continued sponsor of the channel, and I want you to check them out by visiting simplysafe.com/samcrack or by simply clicking my link in the description box below. Now, Let's check up on the Grinch. Oh boy, do I love these bananas! In just a few days, we are taking the Repo Honda Ridgeline on a several hundred mile road trip to go and rebuild a supercar. So I want to accomplish two things today. The first will be a general maintenance. We'll check out the spark plugs. We'll do a quick oil change. We'll change out that air filter. When we're underneath the truck, we're going to want to inspect for any bad suspension components. And in finding what is actually right or wrong with this truck, we'll figure out whether or not this was actually a good deal. If you watched my previous video, you know that I paid about 50% off retail prices by buying this with a clean title at the salvage auction. Now, before we get started on our oil change, I wanna show you something kind of funny. Since this was a repossessed truck, you could see that the previous owner slid a piece of paper underneath here and put it over the VIN plaque right here so that whoever was coming to get this truck, I guess it kind of might have made their job a little bit more difficult, but they got it and I bought it from the auction. So it must have not been that hard. All right, let's get underneath the truck and get to work. Gotta love an oil change on a Honda. Literally five minutes underneath the car. Little to no mess comes out of one drain bolt unlike some of these German cars I deal with. And we're gonna change the air filter in a moment, but first, I wanna knock these things out. Look at these running boards. They're literally bolted into the area where the car is rusted. They're falling off. We don't want one of these going and flying off as we're driving down the highway. I think the other side's a little bit better, but uh, not by much. I mean, look at this. I wonder what the weight capacity of these are now that they're attached to just straight up rust. Wow, it's real, it's just stuck in that one, but my God, look at the rust. This is not turning out like I wanted it to. Our first problem is a pretty simple one. Right back here is our stabilizer bar end link. It runs from the top of the shock all the way down to the actual stabilizer bar. And you can see it's come apart. This is just broken all the way. The rubber boot is in pieces here. And so we need a entire bar replacement for this. The nice thing is 
These replacements run only $6 a piece for third party replacement parts. We're gonna install that in just a moment. Our second issue is much harder to repair and much more time consuming. You could see that there's a lot of grime around that rack and pinion. There's clearly a very small steering fluid leak. The proper repair is to take out the entire rack and pinion and replace it, a part that only cost about $150. If it was as simple as throwing 150 bucks at the truck and getting a brand new rack and pinion installed, I'd do it in a heartbeat. It's the several hours in labor that a rack and pinion takes. It's not the hardest job, but it's definitely not ideal, especially on jack stands. And for me, this truck's overall condition just isn't worth that deep of a reconditioning. So we're going to do the band-aid approach. And that is we're going to throw in a bottle of power steering fluid stop leak. And we're going to just siphon out some of the old fluid. Now I checked the reservoir down here. It's actually filled up pretty much to the top. So again, the leak isn't super severe. And when I say stop leak, it probably freaks everybody out. And everybody's been told stop leak is the worst thing you can do. In the case of a power steering system, it is substantially different than if you're using like radiator stop leak or something like that. All that bottle is going to do is condition the seals and gaskets inside the current rack and pinion and they should expand a little bit more to slow down or completely stop the leak and so it is a good band-aid solution because all you have to lose is the bottle of stop leak it doesn't have any long-term adverse effects like some of the other sorts of stop leaks might this is a job that should be straightforward but all this rust makes it not straightforward two bolts literally to take this apart one up here one down there and this is a five minute job that's turned into uh, 30 minutes right now. I don't know if you could see this, but there's love bugs just swarming everywhere. One of the worst love bug seasons we've ever had. And I put the wheel and tire back on this corner. And to be completely honest with you, between the bugs, between all the heat and penetrating oil I was putting on that end link, I did not get it off. It was turning, but it was happening so slow. And I just want to power through this car because these bugs are just just out of control right now. I'm gonna end up just taking a cutting wheel to it and then it will come right off. So we've got new air filter, new cabin air filter inside. We have new oil. We've got the stop leak put in the power steering system. Let's get back underneath the hood here. We're gonna just check the condition of the spark plugs. We'll do a transmission oil fluid swap and then we're gonna just check out the rest of the underside, see if there's anything that would concern me before taking this on a long trip. Here's what our plug looked like directly from the motor. Really clean shape. This is a double iridium style plug. So these can cost up to about $10 a piece at the auto parts store. There's no reason to spend the money to replace these cause they're in such good condition. And like I've already said, the truck runs and drives really good. Probably it's best trait. So we're just gonna reinstall our plug back into the hole there. And then we're gonna button up the engine bay. Right, so it's not the most desirable truck, but working on a Honda definitely has its benefits, specifically things like the really easy transmission fluid change. Now, something a dealership might charge you a couple hundred dollars for. Right there, that bolt is the fill hole. So we drained it, and we're gonna fill it right through there with 3.3 quarts, and that's about as simple as an oil change. That noise in combination with the smell that's coming out of the front end would tell me that there's a catalytic converter that's bad. But it could actually be multiple catalytic converters because there's three on this truck. There's one here, there's one on the reverse side of the engine, and then there's one that runs underneath the car. So besides the steering rack, the only other expensive repair mechanically on this car would be those catalytic converters if you decide to replace all three. But hey, all three of them might not need to be replaced. And a lot of people here in the state of Florida when that happens on their car, they just continue driving because we do not have emissions testing here. Look at this. It's like something out of a horror movie. The main rust issue is pretty well contained to the rocker area. They're very rusty and falling apart. But when we get underneath the car and look at the unibody, well, there's some rust and some of the brackets might have some rust on it. The unibody itself is in fairly good shape. The only other really nasty, what looks like rusty section on this car is this rear subframe here. That looks like it's rotting apart. However, 
if I take like a screwdriver and try and pry at this, it's not flaking like rust. So I'm not sure if somebody treated that with something or what that really is. It doesn't look unsafe to drive, but it sure looks unsightly. When I originally bid and won the Ridgeline at auction, I said this. Now this truck was actually about an hour and a half away and the bid was coming up the next day. Didn't have the time to go see it in person before bidding, but it's a Honda. I mean, how bad could it be? But I spoke too soon. And as you guys have probably already figured out, this truck just wasn't that great of a deal. Now I spent $3,500 getting it from the salvage auction with fees and everything included. And I've only spent about another additional $200 in parts and really only between two and three hours of my own time doing some regular maintenance on it. But this truck still has some moderate mechanical issues and I still don't think that's what makes this truck a big deal. It's obviously it's rust situation combined with those moderate mechanical issues. Even though this truck seems to sell between about seven to $8,000 on private party classified sites, I think that if you wanted to refurbish this truck to what we could call 95% condition, cutting out those rockers down below and replacing them with new metal so you don't have the rust issue, fixing the steering rack and installing at least one, if not two new catalytic converters because it's got that fuel smell when you turn it on, you'd be in this truck another three, $4,000 easily if you paid someone to do it. Now, if you are a weekend DIYer, you could knock this truck out in a few weekends, but it's definitely gonna take you a handful of days. The nice thing is the parts aren't that expensive on it. But for me, who's looking for a little bit more of a longer term relationship, this just isn't gonna do it. Now, still at $3,500 plus the couple hundred dollars I have into it, it's definitely a capable truck. It'll run and drive for a while longer. I'd imagine the body would rot out on this truck before its drivetrain went out. That's just a testament to Honda reliability. Now, I gotta give a big shout out to one of my good friends, Alex Palmieri from the channel Legit Streetcars, because when I ran this truck by him as an auto mechanic for the last several years, he told me when it comes to buying repossessed cars, he'd rather buy something that was crashed and rebuilt than something that was repossessed. Just due to the fact that once the owner of the car knows that the bank is coming to take it back from them, there's no incentive to keep it maintained. So they typically just neglect it. And every time I look at this truck, the first word that comes to my head now is neglect. It's a perfect way to describe it. Now, I gotta give myself one excuse. Coming from Florida, I've bought Florida cars my entire life. And when I'm buying something from the salvage auction, usually it's a sports car with lower miles or maybe was just driven during the summer months. In the case of this, I've never experienced rust like this ever. So my mind just didn't really think of rust when I was bidding on the Ridgeline at auction. Now, if you live up north and have dealt with rust on your cars, Tell me what you think about the amount of rust this truck has in the comments section below. Is this just the moderate amount of rust or is it a pretty severe issue? I'm gonna start looking for new trucks at the salvage auction, so also let me know what you think I should consider for a real long-term replacement to the Honda Ridgeline. We're obviously gonna spend a little bit more money next time so I can buy something and keep it for a good long while. Now guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe even learned something from it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you're not already following me on Instagram, where I'll be posting pictures of the new supercar rebuild project before they go live here on YouTube. Just go right here or click the link in the description box below. I wanna thank each and every one of you for watching today and I'll catch you very soon. <music>